Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr. It's time for the Thursday afternoon, just before Friday, Monday morning podcast, and I'm just checking in on you. I'm checking in on you, but do 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 the checking in on you. Fuck cold medicine. Who cares if your nose is fucking running? Get some fucking Kleenex and have some fun. And sorry, I'm so sick of being sick. Just when the fuck is this going to end? I woke up. I had a fucking coffin fit at like four in the morning. And, uh, you know, I was upstairs. I've been banished upstairs. You know what I mean? Like back in the day when people had like tuberculosis after the slumlord stuck them in some damp, dark fucking apartment for years and years and years. And then these poor fucking tenants would die a lonely death and then they'd build a statue, statue to the fucking slumlord or name a subway stop after him. You know, what was that one on off the six? What the fuck? I can't remember the name of the stop. I used to get off it all the time and walk over to the fucking cellar. I remember everything I saw in New York, I just, anybody had a statue, I just started looking them up on the internet. But it was all the shit that they did. But if you went to about page three or four, it was the other stuff that they did. (laughs) (coughs) Oh, yeah. Um, People, if I live long enough, I'm going to do a show this weekend at the Fox Theater in Atlanta, Georgia. And then you know what I'm going to do the following day? You know what I'm going to do? Well, do you? I'm getting in a fucking rental car, and I'm driving over to fucking Talladega. And I'm going to go watch a bunch of fucking rednecks watching their dream cars going around the track one more time. One more fucking time. Hey, is stock car racing going to change now that Ford is fucking phasing out all of their sedans? Did you guys see that? They're not making any cars anymore. They're going to still have the Mustang, you know, because what would a fucking tourist rent when they come to L.A.? You got to get the red Mustang convertible and put the fucking top down and drive around like a douche. Right. Oh, do you know, you want to hear you want to hear some self-involved shit. They're always talking about the millennials. You know what I mean? You ask a millennial, what's the top fucking social issue out there today? And they'd say lack of cell service, you know, in a tunnel. No, actually, they said climate change, and they're determined to tackle the issue. That's what I just read today. Millennials think that climate change is the number one social issue. Of course it is. And they are 100% right. God bless them. And they're determined to tackle it. You know, wait till they get a little bit of debt under their belts. Wait till those banker cuts, cunts get them under their fucking, you know, get a runner on the wheel. You know, wait till they get married. Yeah, wait till that happens. You start getting fucking nagged. Then your priority becomes paying off my fucking house and and fucking redoing the garage so I got a place for myself. But until then, until then, all right, you save the polar bears. I hope you do it. I hope you stick to it. I hope you keep it real, man. Like whenever you see an old hippie still rocking the long fucking, you know, hair, even if he went bald, still has it all gathered in the back, you know, um, Anyways, what the fuck was I going to... God damn it, Bill, with your tangents. There was something I was going to talk about there. What I brought, I was talking about cold medicine, being sick, led me to the cars, Talladega. Ah, fuck if I know. I don't fucking know. All I know is that I've been sick too fucking long, and I've had this fucking thing started Wednesday of last week. These are these new super colds. Because everybody takes antibiotics and everything, right? And rather than killing the virus, all you do is slap it around a little bit and it toughens up. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, that, you know? And it starts to know your tendencies. He leads with a left fucking jab, always follows it with an overhand right. He doesn't like when you crowd him in the ring. Oh, shit, somebody's calling me. Oh, it's my mother. Hey, mom, I'm doing my podcast. Let me call you right back. All right. Um, anyways, um, fuck, I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. 
Oh, yes. Oh, no. So I woke up at like four in the morning. Just fucking hacking, hacking away. And I'm, you know, upstairs in the guest room. That's where I've been, you know, sent. My wife is also sick. You know, but she gets to stay in the big bed. You see how that works? You know, with the nice fucking master bathroom right next door. She has a fucking humidifier going. She's got her fucking Kleenex with the, uh, you know, you won't get a sore noise, nose fucking mist on him. I'm up in the fucking guest room, you know, with all my dr- my old drum DVDs and shit. Blowing my nose with t- toilet paper. That's how it works, you know. And you, you, what do you see? All you see is women just constantly complaining about the way, the way men treat women, and their position in society, right? This is a society, right? What about me? What about my existence? You know? Where's my ribbon? Where's my hashtag? How come I can't get somebody fired? You know? I've actually been winning arguments lately with my wife. It's been good. You know, it's caused her to kind of like, you know, do a couple things around the house that I've been asking her to do. But I know it's going to go back the other way. Same way, like, she goes, you got to watch your temper. And then for a few days, I walk around smiling like a lunatic before I go back to who I am. But, you know, I accept it for who she is. All right? That's what you have to do after a while. You know, all you ladies out there, you think you're going to change your man. You're not. You're not going to change him. The best you can hope to do is break his spirit. Okay? And if that if that's what gets you off. What about all of that shit, you know? How about a ribbon for all the broken men out there? <laughs> I don't know why I'm talking about all of this shit. It just fucking, it always makes me laugh. Um, anyways, how about those Bruins? Here we go, Bruins. Here we go. Bump, bump. Wow, did I think we were going to lose that game seven? You know, when we started our fourth fucking line and immediately gave up a goddamn goal, I was like, wow. That reminds me of certain somebody not starting a game, crying before the Super Bowl. What the fuck are we doing, right? Then we tie it up. Then we go ahead. All right, it was two to one. Then we scored one right before the first fucking period ended or something. And I was like, oh, boy, it's three to two. Look at that. That's what I was. It was one nothing them, then one one us, and then they immediately fucking scored like they always did. And then we fucking, and we went up three to two. And I'm like, okay, maybe, maybe, you know, whatever. And then they score two fucking goals. They're up five to three. This is one thing I've noticed about the Bruins. We don't hit anybody. Finally started hitting somebody in the third period. But Jesus Christ, when the other team is faster than you, you're supposed to hit them to try to slow them down. Giving them way too much fucking space. I, th- I thought, you know, I thought Anderson looks shaky in the first period so i was like let's pepper him with some shots there in the second and uh we barely got a shot on him it felt so i thought that allowed him to settle down well jesus christ was i wrong i tell you you hate to see it you hate to see it when a fellow fellow ginger you know fucking has a game like that you know i guess tory krug he was a little bit screened but uh, he left. A, he let up a fucking softy that next one with that goal number five was a softy and also one of the First three wasn't a good one either. Um, Not to put it all on him. Uh, But anyways, my condolences to fucking Toronto Maple Leaf fan. Jesus Christ. You know, and you got to give it up to the ones that still have the heart to fucking go down to Maple Leaf Square, whatever the fuck they call it, and stand there knowing that their joy is eventually going to turn to anger. And then they're just going to be part of a fucking reaction video. A bad one. But you have to go, right? As a Leafs fan, you got to go. Because one of these times, you're going to fucking win. I like what that one guy in the Leafs said. He said, obviously it sucks. But I think in the future, we're going to be a team to be reckoned with. I always love that expression. Team to be reckoned with. I think they're going to be. Um, you know, if old Freckle settles down a little bit, they get a little more playoff experience. I'll tell you what the Bruins need. They need a physical presence in front of the net. Each day, you know, we we still haven't made up for fucking Lucic departure. There's no, we always had that runaway fucking train that would just flatten people. Actually, we used to have like three of them. 
We just don't have that anymore. Now we're fucking fast as shit. At least I thought we were until we played the Maple Leafs. Um, anyway, so now the Bruins move on. We got the Tampa Bay Lightning. Part of that hotbed of hockey fans down there. I went to a Tampa Bay Lightning game down there, right? I went with Forrest Shaw. We were sitting there, and there was these uh, Florida, northern Florida rednecks behind us. Some of my favorite rednecks. I like rednecks, you know. Um, there was not a fix shit. I'll fix it. Ain't going to fit. But uh, it'll hang off nice. Um, we were sitting there, and they had on the Diamond Vision, they put this little baby up there, right? You know, they had an infant up on the screen. And the guy behind us goes, look at that little baby. <laughs> I don't know why they just stuck with us. So the whole rest of the road trip, we'd be driving over to fucking Orlando, dead silence in the car, and the forest would just be like, look at that little baby. Look at that, look at that, look at that little baby. Um, it was hilarious and also scary, just listening to the guy, because he didn't sound real bright. And just the fact that, you know, his jizz can also make babies. I just wish that, like, your level of intelligence made you also, like, like your IQ should be the same level as your uh, reproductive like uh, potency. Is that the right word? <coughs> like if you're a fucking moron, it should be a half court shot that you're going to get somebody knocked up. You know, that's not how it works. Dumb people usually have like that super jizz, you know, well, they just stand next to somebody and they get fucking pregnant, just shooting out fucking kids. Uh, that's because they're too dumb to plan. You know, they're just laying on the back. But it feels good. It feels good. It feels good. Why is my belly sticking out? Why is my belly moving? Does anybody else feel weird after that meal? And then they just fucking shit the kid out on a sofa. I mean, that happens. That still happens in America. Out there on the Appalachian Trail. God knows Hollywood will go out there and put some cameras on it and turn it into a fucking reality show. And next thing you know, we're buying it. And this fucking little kid sewing together T-shirts with these fucking dope faces on it. All right. And that's what's wrong with this goddamn country. Um, Jesus Christ. I love all these people taking the bait on that fucking Kanye West shit. He obviously has an album coming out. You fucking morons. Relax. Has he lost his mind? Didn't you learn anything with that Beyonce album? Well, she was acting like she was all annoyed with Jay-Z. And that there were all these problems and oh, what the fuck? And everybody just starts gossiping and everybody buys the fucking album and they're still together. How many fucking times are you going to jump on the hook? He's obviously recording a fucking album. There's no more MTV. Billboards are a lot of fucking money. Why don't you just start saying some crazy shit that makes no fucking sense? You know, and then people will listen to your next album. I'm going to fucking do that. Get my podcast numbers up. What the fuck can I... uh, I'm going to just start saying positive shit about women. (laughs) Ha, 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 ha. You know, I think the real problem beyond global warming and that swirl of trash out in the Pacific Ocean, even worse than ISIS. Oh, I got a text message. Ah, I dropped the phone. Jesus Christ. Tiki Barber. Pick it up, Bill, for Christ's sake. Shut this fucking thing up. I think the biggest problem Beyond ISIS, and ISIS is a major problem. I mean, they're just like the Third Reich if the Third Reich had no planes or boats or really any technology. Um, is white male heterosexuals and their microaggression, um, which is why I have decided, I can't even do this because you guys are going to fucking retweet this thing. And next thing you know, it'll be some fucking, I don't want to get involved in that. I was going to say that I've I've decided, no, I can't say it because everyone's going to get all fucking upset. It rhymes with (laughs) manzition. 
That would be the ultimate, right? If you did that. It'd be funny if you did, right, if you did that like as a, as a sign of solidarity with all the pain that women have been through, that you actually uh, went through with the sex change operation. And then everybody called you a hero. And then Diane Sawyer interviewed you and they made you woman of the year. And then after all that cleared, all these women came forward and said you were grabbing ass and titties all through the 90s and 2000s. <laughs> and then you'd be like, well, I didn't do that. That was Frank. I'm Francis. And I just feel like for me. Right? And then you're on the other side of the issue. Um, and they'd be like, well, isn't Frank still in there? And you could be like, well, I left Frank on the, that fucking operating table. I never was Frank. Frank is my white slave name given to me by my white parents. Um, Jesus Christ, how much more time do I have in this fucking podcast? I usually like doing these things, man, but when my fucking head is all clogged like this, you know, when I lay down in my slippers having to podcast with a head cold, then that's a day's work, people. Now, I know you guys are out there doing construction. What the fuck do people do nowadays? Everybody, air quote, works from home now, which means they're out driving around on the highways during the day causing fucking rush hour traffic. You know what I mean? Because they saw something on Pinterest that they have to go pick up to add to their fucking wardrobe for their party that night, right? Um, We should go back to making our own clothes. We should go back to that. You make your own clothes. You grow your own burgers, right? You want a fucking burger, go slaughter that cow. And then you figure out how to freeze the rest of that meat or you're going to starve this winter there, pilgrim. Um, I think something like that's going to happen. We're either going to regress to that after this shit hits the fan, or this Illuminati stuff is true, and the robots will kill all of us, and, uh, oh, wow, that'd be amazing. In the future, right, there's this Illuminati city, and everybody's dead, except for the Illuminati people, right, and the other people that they, they keep making, they kept enough people, right, with good genes, that they make fuck each other, so they keep making babies and stuff that they can use to fucking, you know, as almost like a parts car, you know, for organs when they reach maturity. I know this is fucked up, right? Um, sort of like Westworld meets uh, a guy with a head cold doing a podcast on a Thursday. That's how I'd pitch this in Hollywood. I'd come in, I'd say, hello, everybody. We do all this small talk, but ba 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 You know, I, I'd read the fucking room, try to figure out, see where the laughs are going to be, you know, try to block out the ice cold person. That douche was just sitting there, you know, fidgeting with their fucking pen. Um, and I would, I would just pitch it. Oh, I'd pitch the hell out of it. So anyway, so then you have an Illuminati city. All right. And they feel like they've won, but they're actual, actually prisoners because the robots have the city surrounded, you know. And they still have some robots, the older versions that are good, you know that still work with the people. But the latest update of the one went fucking rogue and killed a couple of the. It was like the first people that died other than the parts people in like hundreds of years. So they hit the fucking shield and they got this big bubble like the Simpsons that one time, right? They got this big bubble over the fucking city and they stay in there with the older version of the robots and they're the ones that have to try to protect them as the fucking higher level ones are trying to figure out how to get into the bubble. And that's what it is. And this weird thing, you'd have to root for these piece of shit humans. So then obviously what would happen is you'd have a really good-looking parts person like Ryan Gosling. And he... Hey, Nia. Hi. 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 And he would, uh, he would somehow, you know, he'd bang like the hottest Illuminati person. And she'd believe in him. And then him and one of the lesser robots would then fucking defeat the next level robots while freeing all the parts people and then killing the Illuminati people. There you go. And you could, you could finish the story halfway through it and then get everybody to go to the second one. Right. And then all you have to do is just show up down at comic con wearing an Obi-Wan Kenobi robe. And I think you got a billion dollar franchise. What do you think? Nia? You like that movie? I love it. What would you name that movie? Bill's, Great idea for a movie. 
<laughs> oh, Jesus. What are you doing on my phone? I wasn't listening. I'm texting myself those pictures. What pictures? The pictures you took of me earlier with the baby. That's it? Yeah, I gotta get back to our child. Oh, that's right. I forgot we had a kid. <coughs> Come on, you guys. You know, somebody puts 10,000 hours into that idea. You got yourself a good fucking movie, movie, movie. It's a lot of hacky shit in there. You know, it's like Westworld meets fucking Moonraker um, with a dash of happy days, you know, because at some point, some oh fucking Ron Howard directs Ryan Gosling stars. He probably wouldn't do it because he already did Blade Runner. Did you guys see that one? The 2048 Blade Runner? That movie was, that movie was the shit. I just noticed I've probably been coughing like every five fucking seconds on this. I apologize. I apologize, but I'm not going to take a cough drop. All right? Cough drops are for socialists. All right. Anyway, so, you know, I like when, when you do an interview, when you got a fucking show coming up, they go, Bill, so what can people expect from you? Uh, what are you going to be talking about when uh, you come to town? What, what, well, I can't fucking tell you that because then the jokes are going to be over. Everybody's going to know what I'm going to be talking about. What kind of fucking question is that? You sound like you're still angry. What angers you these days? I'm not angry. It's just my, my default emotion. I walk around relaxed, and then when anything happens, good or bad, I get it. And I don't, I don't, you know, if it's good, I don't get angry. I don't know. Hey, we got a new advertiser. Okay, we somehow convinced somebody else to get on this sinking ship. Let's see here. From the halls of Montezuma to the shores of Tripoli, I will type my fucking password. All right. Oh, Butcher's Box. Butcher's Box. And we're not talking about his wife. All right. Butcher's box. Now, these guys actually sent me a bag of fucking butchered meat, and I had a steak the other day. I may, and my wife cooked it. Huh? Tell me I'm not running shit in my house. I was actually sick, and she's a sweetheart, and she cooked it, and it was fucking delicious. It was a giant portion, so much that I've actually saved it for a little bit of steak and eggs later on this week. Uh, Butcher box delivers healthy, 100% grass fed and finished beef. I don't know what finished means. They are, it means they butchered it. Free range organic chicken and heritage bred pork directly to your door on a monthly basis. Eat like you're in the Illuminati. All their products are humanely raised. Excuse me, could you come over here if you wouldn't mind before I butcher you? And never ever given antibiotics or hormones. There you go. If you don't want your kids to hit puberty at eight, Butcher blocks, butcher blocks, butcher box, high quality, healthy protein you can trust. You can shake hands with these cows. 100% grass fed and finished beef, free range organic chicken. We've said this heritage bred pork. What is Ric Flair out there? That's old world pork before they bred out all of the fat and flavored to make it the other white meat, a.k.a. This is pigs the way they were meant to be. I got to look up heritage bred pork. That's fascinating. Unbelievable taste. It's like a an, an old car with matching numbers. Unbelievable taste. There's a huge difference in taste between animals raised on pasture and those fed in grain concent in concentration animal feedlot operations. Butcher Box is changing that. This is great. There's more and more of these types of people. Got to love it. Um, and they offer free shipping anywhere in this in the 48 states, the lower 48. Alaska, who's kidding who, right? You're fucking trapping your own meat. In Hawaii, you uh, eat pineapples. Over 20% off plus free bacon by going, free bacon? By going to butcherbox.com slash burr and using the discount code burr, B-U-R-R. I tried this shit. I ate this shit. I love this shit. I backed this shit. Butcherbox.com slash burr. Um, you don't got time to go to the butcher. Use these guys. I have to look up heritage bred pork. You know, every former president's always eating this shit, right? 
Here we go. Heritage bred pork. Heritage swine definition. It's funny when somebody uses the word swine and it's not an insult. I fucking love pigs. There's certain animals that I, I, you know, I like all animals, but I fucking love pigs. Is anything cooler than a little piglet running around? Def, I like ducks. I like piglets. Emus freak me out. Dogs are awesome. Cats I respect, but you know what I mean? I, you know, I, there's never any like sort of like, every once in a while you meet a really cool fucking cat. All right, definitely, but they got that Freddy Krueger claws and shit, you know? You turn around real quick and they're like practicing killing you. You know, you catch them stalking you and shit. They're fucking weird. You wake up, they're on your chest, staring at you. Like that chicken misery. All right, purpose. Swine have been a part of the American agricultural landscape since the arrival of the New World colonists. Why do they have to go that fucking far back? This is why I don't read books. Moby Dick, get to the fucking whale. Sorry. Swine indigenous to Europe were brought with immigrants during the colonization of America. Can you imagine those fucking things on the the wooden ship? Freaking the fuck out. Riding over there with us hairless monkeys. Knowing they're going to get killed. Um, And the many different types of swine they brought have provided pork, lard, pest control, and land improvement services for centuries. How do pork, how do pigs help with pest control? Because they fucking eat everything? I have something else to look up. This is how you lose a day on the internet. Because there's always an answer. Doesn't mean it's right, but there's always, someone, will, someone will have a page. This is what I think. This is what, this is what they do with varmints. Uh, modern bread associations maintain pedigree registries of purebred animals for each breed that descends from these colonial... Oh, wow. These are like the fucking, the blue bloods of pigs, as well as later introductions. Uh, Registration of animals destined to become breeding stock is essential to the long-term security of the breeds. Registration validates purebred status of the animals and assures their availability for conservation by future generations. Many swines, many swines breed, swine breeds that were once Core components of regional cultures are now in danger of, of extinction as cultures of homo, homo, homogenized, homogenized, God, I'm stupid, and historic agricultural traditions abandoned the flavors and food traditions that revolved. Or yeah, check on Monsanto for that one. Fucking lunatics. Definition of heritage swine. I don't even know if it's Monsanto. They're always the default people you blame. Who knows? Allegedly, Monsanto. Heritage swine must adhere to all of the following. Uno. Uh, one. Eins. Uh, true gen- genetic bread. The breed is a true genetic breed of swine. That is, when mated together, it reproduces the breed type. All right, I guess this is from Europe. Uh, two. Duh, dos. What is it? Eins, times. I, I, I can't do the German. Endangered breed. The breed is or has been endangered as defined by the livestock cons- conservancy and appears on or is recovered from the con- conservancy's conservation priority list in the critically threatened. Jesus Christ. Long history in the U.S. Purebred, st- I get it. It's purebred. I like it. They're fucking endangered and I'm eating them. I'm eating the fucking pig version of a fucking bald eagle. Um, what the fuck? Did- I, just, I just shut that off and I, I, I wanted to... What else did I want to look up? What was it? Oh, how do pigs control pests? Population. What eat bugs? <coughs> not how, how not how to Bill, how do. Okay. Here we go. Well, it just says forbidden. And that information was forbidden. Practical feral pig control. Because feral pig population those are the wild pigs. 
Anyways, fuck this shit. How are there wild pigs, by the way? Were those the farmers that got scalped by the Native Americans and they just their pigs just ran off, continued to fuck for centuries? You know? I don't know. I don't have the answers to these questions. But I do have some bullshit I have to do at 10 o'clock. Um, all right. That is the podcast. This was a weird one. All right? But we came up with a good movie idea. We learned about heritage pigs and fucking uh, swine from Europe and uh, go Bruins and Celtics. How about those Celtics? I'm going to try to wrap up these pesky fucking Milwaukee Bucks. You know, I like that one guy on, on Milwaukee. He looks like a fucking, like a mid-sized Manute bull. Really dark-skinned guy. I, he, hit, he hit some fucking layup or some shit to go up by four in the second quarter, and he shushed the crowd. <laughs> like he just hit a game win in three. It was the second quarter, and then they go on to lose the game. I just don't, I, I don't understand these kids today. All right, everybody, have a great weekend, you cunts. And I'll see everybody in Atlanta, and I'll see you down at the fucking racetrack. Tell them out there in Alabama Cup Saturday. Listen to the music and enjoy another half hour of uh, greatest hits from a Thursday just before Friday, Monday morning podcast. Thursday earlier this year, or possibly this decade. All right, I'll see ya. going on it's bill burr and it is the monday morning podcast from monday april 26th april april 26th 2010 how the hell are you uh, i'm a little late today with the podcast doing it 343 los angeles time uh and you're probably wondering like dude what the fuck you're supposed to be doing these monday morning that's why you call it the monday morning podcast so when i come to work on monday morning i have something to listen to rather than focusing on the fucking job that i hate well, you're right. I am this, I am late this week, but you know what? I was busy. It's fucking busy this week. Uh, I I was doing shit this morning. You know what I mean? And also, not to mention, I am filming this podcast for the first time ever. I am allowing somebody else into the Monday morning podcast bunker. Until now, people just had to use their imagination to wonder what the fuck does Bill look like while he does this podcast. Is he wearing a tuxedo? Maybe a dinner jacket? Is he sitting there? You know, I'm not. I'm in pajamas and my T-shirt with my little um, Radio Shack headphones on. Just the exact way that you pictured me. But I am filming it this week um, because uh, my DVD is uh, just about complete. And now we are working on extras. And I think I, my, my last DVD, I did the uh, I did a little short history, a bunch of clubs that I loved in New York. So you kind of got that whole background. And I figured, oh, maybe I'll do this. Maybe I'll film the podcast, edit out the (laughs) hours and hours of unfunny moments, right? See, you're going to actually hear the whole fucking podcast. These idiots who bought my DVD who are going to watch it and just be like, oh, my God, this is the greatest fucking thing I've ever seen because of the wonderful world of editing. So you're probably thinking, like, what are you doing, Bill? You're filming it yourself and you're going to edit it? That, that, That does not, that's not consistent with the moron that I'm used to listening to. Well, you're right, I'm not. I have the wonderfully talented Brian Spitz is uh, working the camera. Yep, that was him right there. He actually shot my failed pilot last year on Comedy Central. Remember that one? That was fun. That was fun, and we got excited, didn't we? We, we were like, it's going to happen. It was a great, what, honestly, it was a great fucking show, wasn't it? Probably one of the best pilots ever made. Ever, in the history. In the history of failed pilots. I, I, I would say we were <laughs> the, the, yeah, we were in the, we were in the uh, you know, we just failed. As opposed to just a complete failure. It'd be like, you know, if a pass, passing grade was 60. I think, I think we got about 58 on that. You know? I don't know. But you know what the weird thing is? It's actually up on my IMDB page. 
That's what I love. I don't know who put it up there, but you're not supposed to put shit on there that isn't on TV or wasn't released in cinema or whatever. And uh, I, for the life of me, I don't know how to take it down, but um, take care you'll take it care. Okay, thank you. Because people, all right. Well, it's cool. Can you actually can you actually call IMDb? I don't know. Okay, yeah. But that's not a good. I'm going to call those guys. I'm going to call that website. And, uh, yeah, I'll get those guys on the phone to see what's up. So, yeah, so if you're ever wondering what the Burr effect was, that was just a working title that we gave it to him. It never aired, and it won't air unless I uh, become hugely famous or infamous. That's basically it. If I become uh, a huge movie star or television star, you'll probably end up seeing it in some form. Or if I go to a mall and I just start fucking, you know, killing puppies at the local pet store. Or whatever the fuck you do. I wouldn't say shooting because every, everybody's done the shooting thing. Isn't that like hacky at this point? You know what I mean? That's, it's, like, it's like if I was a comedian, I went on, on, on stage and I started talking about airline food. Basically go, walking in to a mall massacring people. I think it's hacky at this point. You know? Yawn. If I can be so bold to say I'm fucking bored with that shit. But anyways, let's get to me and my big fucking week. Did you guys have a big week? Well, if you didn't... Let me fucking tell you about my big week. First of all, I don't know if I've been talking about this on the podcast as I settle into my sofa. Um, basically, everything that identified me as the person that I am, uh, a month ago, either it was expiring or I didn't have it. You know? I, I basically could not prove that I existed with any sort of paper. You know, my passport was expiring, my driver's license. I needed to get that thing for about fucking two years. I'm not going to lie to you. When you first move out to Los Angeles, I think they give you about six weeks to get it. And I've almost been out here for three fucking years. So, uh, and my New York license was expiring. I didn't have a social security card that I could produce. I had the number, you know, the Illuminati gave me a fucking number when I was eight years old. Let's get him on the wheel. Let's get him on the wheel. Let's get him in debt. Are you in college? Are you making 200 bucks a week? Hey, here's a Visa card. We'll give you a $3,000 limit. Don't worry. Don't worry. Give us 25 bucks a week and just get it up to your three grand limit and we'll fucking own your ass. All right? So I didn't have that. What else didn't I have? My, my birth certificate. I had nothing. I had nothing. So I was like, uh, I was like, fuck, I got to handle this shit, you know, because all of a sudden now I'm doing gigs in Europe. You know, I think I'm going to Japan to uh, perform for the troops. I need pieces of paper saying I am who I am and I have not done anything fucked up. So uh, in one month, I got my passport renewed. I went down to the Social Security office. I got that fucking thing. I found my birth certificate and the last thing I needed was my driver's license. So you figure, all right, the driver's license, I mean, that's a pain in the ass to take the fucking test, you know? You ever notice like what a pussy you become as an adult when it comes to tests? Like, I think once you don't take a test for a while, you're used to it as a kid. People are always testing you, you know. We're having a spelling test. We're having a vocabulary test. Some bully punches you in the face. He's testing you, you know. Are you going to be a fucking man? You know, are you Charles Bronson at age 12? Or are you fucking uh, Richie Cunningham, who I was and got bullied? (laughs) And sees no reason to go back to a fucking reunion. No, it wasn't that bad. You know what? I'll be honest with you. Uh, when was it bad? Maybe elementary school, beginning of middle school. Everybody hit their growth spurt, and I didn't. I still had a high-pitched voice and a, a, an orange afro. That wasn't a good look. That wasn't the look you wanted to rock, as the youth says. So anyways, I have to take my driver's test out here. And uh, I brought it up with a cu- couple other uh, La- Los Angelinos. And straight across the board, everybody was telling me, like, they had horror in their eyes at how difficult this fucking test was going oh my god dude dude it, it's dude it's fucking hard it's fucking hard they kept saying that I remember i always lived out here 10 years ago i took the test it wasn't fucking hard I'm like don't dude i'm telling you dude it was fucking hard and i had this girl at this party was this have you been to the dmv out here oh my god it's not like the dmv anywhere else la it, it's just like its own deal and i kept saying well i've been to the dmv i've been to it i know it's crowded and she just kept going no no like you don't understand and there's nothing worse than somebody just tells you, like, you don't understand. It's like somebody from Chicago, when you try to tell them it was a cold winter, and then they got to go on about fucking how you don't know what cold is until you're standing there rubbing your balls next to fucking Lake Michigan. You know, like, it's fucking minus 20 degrees in Boston, but still, that's, you know, 
My family all came from fucking the Midwest. So anytime I had a paper and I'd bitch about the cold, oh, let me tell you, you don't know cold. You don't know, go to Chicago. Let me tell you, go to Chicago. I said, all those fucking idiots. Had some good barbecue. Oh, dude, you don't know barbecue. Go to fucking Texas. That's where they got the bar. Like, like they're the only people who know that shit. All right, I got a little upset there. Don't hold it against me. So anyways, uh, so everybody's telling me I don't know what the fucking DMV is. You know what all this does? This just motivates me to pass this fucking test in the first time so I can just so I can justify me judging all these L.A. douchebags like they're just mentally weak fucking people. So I start studying the test, get the book, and it's like 90 pages. I was like, fuck. All right, whatever. Break it down. I'm going to do 30 pages a day. I outline this book. Huh? What are you doing right now? Sitting in your cubicle instead of working, looking at your spreadsheets? What are you doing? I, you hear what? I fucking outlined the book. I outlined the book. 30 pages at a fucking time, meticulously. Like Tom Hanks in that movie when he was chasing Leonardo DiCaprio. Catch me if you can. I was like that. That level of shit. And I was, I, I, I just, you know, fucking broke the whole book down. And then I sat there every day for 45 minutes to an hour. And I went over all the shit. And two days before the test, Saturday, I actually took the sections out that I, that I still was having problem with. And I just fucking went hardcore on that section. Memorized that and went through my, all my outline. I knew the whole fucking thing. Huh? You want to ask me some questions? You want to talk about parking near railroad tracks? I got a fucking answer for you. Seven and a half feet. If you're inside of seven and a half feet, you're fucked. 18 inches from the curb, three feet from a fucking handicap ramp, you know? One of these fucking guys rolling by asking you for a quarter. Those guys, you can't get and like three feet close to those guys. 15 feet from a hydrant, you got to start signaling 100 feet before you make a turn. You get into the turning lane, you can only drive in it for 200 feet. You can't use it as a passing lane. I had this shit down. So I'm like, fuck all these people. I walked in there confident. I'm talking Kobe Bryant, eight seconds left, give me the fucking ball. All right? I ironed my shirt. I knew I was getting a picture that day for my license. Going to be nothing but success. So I walk in there. I don't know what happened. Immediately, I start getting fucking nervous. You know? Like the first time I did Letterman. Right? Like the first fucking time you do anything. I'm, I'm fucking getting nervous. I've taken this fucking test four different times. Took it in Boston. Passed it. New York passed it. Came out of L.A. 10 years ago. I passed it. Moved back to New York. Passed the thing. Why am I fucking nervous? Because these fucking L.A. assholes, their voices are in my head. Dude, dude, it's fucking hard. Dude, I fucking failed. You know, I forgot to mention is they all said the same shit. Why, why they failed it is because they didn't study the first time because they thought it was going to be easy because they drive every day. Do you realize how – just think of how stupid that statement is. Dude, I drive every day. I know how to do it. It's those little things, you know, like what does a white curb mean? You know, you come up and it's painted white. What does that mean? Loading and unloading of passengers or picking up mail. Yellow curb. What does that mean? Uh, loading and unloading of freight. If you're not in a commercial vehicle, the driver has to stay with the car. I study for this shit. Give me the rock. It's fucking going in and we're going to the next round of the playoffs. I was ready for that shit. And I, I went in there and I, maybe there was just the overall anxiety of the fucking place, but I do the whole shit. First of all, I do what I always do at the DMV is I just blow off the line and I act like I didn't see it and that I'm some sort of like, you know, royalty, like I'm actually staying at the embassy for some fucking country you never heard of. <laughs> I'm that guy, you know, when you stand in line and you follow the rules and then you get up to the fucking cashier lady and then there's that douche who's just standing there to the side, respectively half an inch just behind your peripheral, but you know he's there, and you can't have a pause in your conversation because you know that asshole's going to jump in. That's who the fuck I was. I said, hey, I'm <clears throat> sorry, buddy, sorry. And I wasn't sorry. That was me really being like, dude, I'm interrupting you right now. And I said, uh, I got to take this, uh, you know, I, ha- I had a previous, you know, a scheduled appointment. Where do I go? They go, oh, you go around the corner, whatever. So thank the guy. I wasn't saying thank you. I don't know what the fuck I was doing. I was just trying to prevent the guy from punching me in the face because I deserved it. And I went over to go take the fucking test. And uh, I'm standing there. And they, only, they got like this walled off area. Okay. And this is how confident I was. I didn't, even, I didn't even brush up out in the parking lot. I was just like, bring this shit on. You want me to take LeBron? I fucking got him. Right? So I walk in there, right? And, and you got to wait. to like, They only allow like five people in there at a time. So the first dude walks out. And... Uh, you know, they got the black dude behind the counter, like the whole scared straight, you need to get your shit together kind of dude, you know. And I'm just sitting there going, oh, fuck, here we go. Here we go. This fucking guy. This guy's breaking hearts all day and he doesn't even give a fuck. 
Look at the look on his face. He doesn't give a fuck. That Bill Parcells look on his face, right? So this fucking Indian dude comes up, and he, and he hands him the thing, and the guy just fucking puts red all over it, and the guy fails. And then I'm like, oh, fuck the Indian guy. These guys are fucking smart, right? Indian guys are smart. They fucking answer our phones over here. I can't answer phones if somebody from India called me, you know? Give myself a fake Indian name. These fucking people are smart. These people were running shit until the English fucked them over, right? This guy fucking passed. But then I calm myself down like, wait a minute. This is a second language. This is his second language. If I went to France, could I pass a driver's test? Fuck no. All right, don't compare yourself to that guy. Then the next dude came up, and it was a slacker. This white kid who had, like, tight jeans, yet they were hanging off his ass, and I just wanted to boot him right in his fucking taint. He passes, so it gave me hope. And I went in there. I got the test, okay? I got eight hours sleep. I took a deep breath, and I'm like, here we go. I have the test right in front of me. And the first one was some bullshit about what is the legal alcohol level, you know, that you can drive on. I'm like, this is a fucking joke. I'm going to ace this test. And, dude... I'm going to tell you right now, after the first question, it just went down fucking hill. Listen to these questions. I'm studying all this shit about how close to park to a curve, a curb and all that shit. You must notify the DMV within five days if you sell or transfer your vehicle or cited for a traffic violation. That's, that's obviously no. Paint your vehicle a different color. So I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, I didn't read that part. I don't remember that part. Sell or transfer your vehicle, paint it a different color. Five days. Sell or transfer your vehicle. Don't you have to fucking tell them right then? Or won't they automatically know? With the satellites? They won't see that transaction go down in the (laughs) the fucking driveway? Dude, and then there's this panic. Just like, and 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 I was like, oh my God, what the fuck? And I got like six questions in, and I literally put the number two pencil down, and I whispered, yell. I went, Really? As I looked at the, the black dude when he wasn't looking at me, of course, totally passive-aggressive. And, uh, dude, I'm not going to lie to you. This fucking test was brutal. It's a fucking brutal. And I, you know, usually when we take a multiple-choice test, it's like there's the obvious, the half-right, and then the fucking ridiculous. Like when you drink a glass of water, should you A, uh, make sure you have enough air in your lungs? <laughs> before sucking down the entire glass. And if you do run out of air, stop drinking and inhale. You know, B, smash the glass against your head. You know, obvious shit, right? This shit was like, when is it legal to use a cell phone? I have the test right here. Without a hands-free device while driving. Okay? When is it legal to use a cell phone without using a hands-free device? Huh? You got an answer? A, when making a call while stopped at a red light. That's obviously no. But here's the two close ones. When making a call for emergency assistance or never? When is it legal to use a cell phone hands-free, people? Hands-free. Hands-free device. And there's all this shit on TV going. If you use your cell phone, uh, it's as bad as fucking drinking and driving. In the book, it said never. And it said you could use it to, if for, to, make, to make an emergency call after you fucking pulled over. And all that bullshit. Look for somebody riding a bike. You know, looking for an old guy in one of those tricycles. All of that shit. So this just said, when making a call for emergency assistance. It didn't say you pulled over. It didn't say you didn't pull over. So I fucking panicked and I wrote, never. Got it wrong. All right. This this fucking story is taking 10 times longer than how long it took me to study for the fucking test. Long story short, out of 18 questions... I got 15 right, three wrong. I fucking passed the test. But I owe, I owe an apology to all you Los Angelinos. This was a hard-ass fucking test. It was difficult. I know what you're thinking. Like that way, You guys are all talking shit because you're relaxed right now, right? Let me find another difficult one here. Highways are typically most slippery. This is a desert question because it doesn't rain out here. And what happens is when it doesn't rain for a while... Oil, transmission fluid, and gas all starts to coagulate. And when it rains, it's like, I can't say it's like ice, but God knows people drive like it out here. But this, this is the question. It says, uh, ah, what the fuck was it? Highways are typically most slippery during a heavy rainstorm in the, middle of, in the middle of summer. All right, middle of summer. It's fucking dry out, you know? Maybe that's it. And then it says, when, it's, when it first starts to rain after a dry spell. Well, yeah. Yeah, after a dry spell, absolutely. But the summer's dry. 
What the fuck, right? So at this point, my, my fucking heart rate is going like 9,000 beats a second. And then it says, after it's been raining for a long time. If it's been raining for a long time, the roads are wet. It's going to still be fucking slippery. But I know it has to do with it being dry out here. So I fucking broke that one down. I'm like, all right, it's the middle of summer. It's a heavy fucking rainstorm. Who's to say it didn't fucking rain heavily the day before and already washed all the gas off? So then I get, so I guessed when it first starts to rain after a dry spell, and I was fucking right. But that's the level you had to break this shit down. All right, so I passed. That's it. They took my thumbprint, the fucking Illuminati, you know, sent that right to the Rothschilds fucking house. Do you know those sons of bitches actually have the audacity, the Rothschilds, to have a book about the giant fucking house they bought in England off of all their fucking Shylock money from the rest of us? Do you believe, you believe the fucking balls of that? Evidently, there's something beyond a mansion. It's called a manor. That's when you have you. That's when you you take like fucking twelve mansions and you put them together. And like people don't even know how to get to your house. Like I can guarantee you something right fucking now. Oh, this is a great way to see if they're running shit. You know when you Google Maps. Like if you Google Map where the fuck I live, not only can you see my place, they'll probably you can probably see my brand new social security card. No one gives a fuck about me. But if you Google Map the Rothschilds house, I guarantee you it doesn't fucking show up like the goddamn White House. Because they're running shit. And you know what? They have my thumbprint on their fucking wall of, the, of their fucking nine-mile wine cellar. Does that make any sense? Well, it shouldn't. Because I don't read, all right? I don't fucking read. Anyways... What else do I got going on here? That wasn't bad, huh? For being filmed, I didn't didn't seem too self-conscious. Look at that. Got a big nod, eyebrows up. I think it's going good. The first filmed Monday morning podcast. This is what I do. If you've been listening to this, I'm talking to the camera right now, not to you. Go back to work. You've been fucking off already for 19 minutes and 40 seconds. This is what I do every week. I sit here in my my pajamas, in my little Foot Locker t-shirt. You know, is this Foot Locker? I don't know what the fuck this is. Foot Locker, like 87 t-shirts for like $9. If you ever wondered, if you ever wondered, hey, did a three-year-old put this shirt together or was the person at least 16? You can never be more sure than when you go to Foot Locker and you buy those fucking t-shirts. When you get like nine of them for eight bucks, that's guaranteed. That, that's not even child. That's like toddler, toddler fucking labor. It'd be funnier if I could fucking say it. So this is what I do every week, okay? is what I do. So if you want to listen to the podcast, go to BillBird.com. Click on Monday Morning Podcast. If you hate your fucking job, hopefully they'll be on iTunes at this point. They will be. I'm going to talk shit. They're going to be on iTunes. You know, I have like 14 listeners. I'm trying to get it up to 15, whatever. Whatever the fuck you want from me. All right, let's plow. Okay, I'm back. I'm back doing the podcast. Um, all right, let's get to the stories this week. I, uh, that was the first story. I'm just going to tell some stories this week. I got another one for you. Um, at this point, do you want me to pause, Brian, and go into another room to give people something visually different to look at? Should I do that? All right. Let's try to hit pause here. Uh, this is going to be really quick for you people listening at home. It's like I'm going to pause, and then we're back. So I'm pausing right now. All right. Yeah, we'll, we'll put bookshelves in there. Okay, we're back. We're back. We decided, you know what, we already tried to do this, and I fucking lost the whole podcast, so we're not doing it. I'm recording right now. We're just, you don't need to record this. You don't need to, you're not going to use this on the DVD. This is just for the poor bastards at home listening. I actually... So that's my deal, everybody. I'm moving shit around my apartment right now. This is exciting. It's exciting to auto, uh, in an audio way to hear the... It isn't. I know it's not. Dude, you know what? Is there any doctors that listen to this? How fucking arrogant is that? Like they have time between surgery to listen to a moron like me? Well, a lot of doctors are arrogant anyways. They save people's lives. They get that God complex. Just to let you know, dude, that's my water. All right? That's yours over there? Okay, just letting you know. I mean, I like you and everything. All right? You did a great job on the pilot, but let's, let's keep it there. Um, I fucked up the arch of my foot. I did it uh, years ago from playing drums, trying to get my foot as fast as John Bonham's, having no fucking technique and not having stretch so that that tendon that runs from the ball of your fucking foot to your heel. Every once in a while, I fuck it up, and it, and it just takes forever to heal. I don't know what I'm supposed to do about it. All right? I stretch. I got the tennis ball rubbing underneath it. I know I'm not supposed to walk around, but th- that's what I do. Okay? <laughs> I use my feet. A lot of people don't. 
You know, if you walk into a McDonald's and you see those people, that's what they use their feet for, to walk to their car, to sit in their car, and then to, they don't even go in anymore. They just drive right up. So I want to know, what else can I be doing? Is there any sort of aspirin that I can be taking to get the fucking inflammation down? And you probably wondered, okay, you're, you're probably asking me this, Bill, because not being able to use your foot is fucking annoying. It goes beyond that, Dr. So-and-so. I'll tell you what my problem is. My problem is I'm going back east for, for a friend of mine's daughter is graduating college, and I, I have to go to the graduation, and... Uh, I'm getting, a be- get, getting together with some people I used to play drums with. We used to jam with back in the day when we all thought we were going to get on MTV and be the latest hair metal band. <laughs> the fact that you had a redhead and a hair metal band and that he could only grow a fucking afro right there should have let you know that you weren't going to make it. So long story short, we're getting together. And rather than going back and playing the music we played in the 80s, because that would just be too sad to go back and play My Michelle (laughs) or whatever the fuck we used to play. We're like, let's do something more contemporary. Now, I've always played single bass drum, and I became a huge fan of Pantera and shit, so I go, let's do Cowboys from Hell. And it's got this insane double bass part, and the second I said that shit, I fucked up my foot, and I haven't been able to practice. And meanwhile, the guitar player, the bass player, they're all shredding, you know, ignoring their children. So, and here I am, going to be the the foundation of the band, and my foot's fucked up, so I need a quick remedy, all right? I need something. I need something fucking quickly here. uh, Is there anything that I can take that that will just, you know, I don't want to take roids for my foot, coming there with my right foot twice as big as the, uh, my left foot, you know? I don't need that. I have one big Jason Giammi, Roger Clemens foot, and the other one's walking around like Willie McGee. I don't need that shit, all right? Tell me, what do I take? Aspirin, a leave, what do I take? Come on, podcast fucking free. You can't hook me up a little free medical advice? Can you email me a prescription? Or would that just literally end your your fucking days as a doctor? All right, let's let's continue on with the podcast as I sit here rolling a tennis ball underneath my foot. Um, The next thing, oh, here's a great story for you. Brian, you might like this. Do you know I was a hero this week? Really? I was actually, I did something heroic. I have, never, I have never done anything heroic in my life, okay? And believe me, I've walked by house fires and saw people screaming, saying, there's a ladder right there. Just put it up, and I walked away. I walked away. Pretended like I didn't hear him. I'm that kind of a fucking guy. Um, no, this is the deal. It was uh, Sunday, and, you know, people go to brunch on Sunday. I'm like, all right, fuck it. I'll go to brunch I'll go to brunch, right? Remember that bit? Huh? Pays $18. Is that asbestos? Is, well, is that asbestos? How did that bit go? Is that asbestos? I thought it was pesto. It's asparagus. I can't even remember. So we go to brunch, and, uh, you know, it's the usual shit. Do you want to sit inside? Do you want to sit out, outside? As a redhead, I'm always going inside. Let's fucking sit inside. I got enough freckles. I've had enough fucking pain in my life. Please, <laughs> let's sit inside. Uh, but, you know, I'm always with broads because they always want to go to brunch. Let's sit outside. It's so nice. It's always fucking nice when they go to brunch. It's never raining, is it? Right? So, all right, let's sit outside. So we, we sit outside. And because I'm the gentleman, I have to sit with my back to the road so I can brace, you know, and protect my girlfriend and her mom in case a bread truck comes flying in because the guy's text messaging or something, right? So I'm sitting there and uh, – all of a sudden, I just feel it. I just feel like something's fucking wrong and something. My caveman DNA, like when you're getting stalked by a saber-toothed tiger, just kicks in. And something just tells me to fucking look left. And I look left, and here comes this crazy fucking lady. And I'm talking crazy. I'm talking Shutter Island. You remember that chick that shushed Leonardo DiCaprio? Is that the second Leonardo DiCaprio fucking reference? There you go. You remember that chick who shushed him in Shutter Island? That's what this girl looked like, except with sort of brownish red hair, okay? It's basically one of these people who should be getting professional help. It's straight up batshit crazy, and uh, this, just, this state is bankrupt, so they just let them go. They just let these fucking people go. You don't see Sarah McLaughlin whining about these people. Come out and rescue these fucking, the, the, these people who are talking to telephone poles. It's all about the dogs with her. Her priorities are so fucked up. It's ridiculous. I hope she sees this. 
I am so disappointed in you, Sarah McLaughlin. Huh? When are you going to grow up and stop whining about those little pussy-ass fucking dogs? All right, that was mean. All right, let's get back to it. So she starts coming down the street, and she's like, she looks like she's going to start fucking crying. Okay? Like, and it's just one of those things. You know, you just feel this fucking person's going to do something, and I have a feeling they're going to do it to me. So I, I'm, I'm working out my shit. I'm like, for, fortunately, the chairs were these really light wicker sort of kind of douchey, brunchy chairs. So I was just going to grab the fucking chair, and I was going to smash her in the face if I didn't have time, or if I had time, I was going to leap to my feet on my bad fucking foot and out like a lion tamer. Ah, get back, crazy person, right? <laughs> Start whipping her with the fucking tulips on the nice, beautiful brunch table. That's what I was going to do. So she doesn't lunge at me, but she walks by me. There's that awful moment, the blind spot. You know what I mean? Where she's not to my left, she's not to my right, she's right behind me, and she fucking goes by me. And I'm like, thank God. Like, I was seriously fucking nervous. And I look left again just to, you know, I don't know why I look left again. And then I see this fucking sad looking woman slowly following the crazy person with this look on her face like she had been wronged. uh, Next thing I know, next thing I fucking know, she's talking to the table next to us and talking to us, talking about how that crazy woman had just walked up to her, reached up to her sweater and just fucking ripped (laughs) I don't know if she had a brooch. She just fucking took it off her chest and walked away with it. And I'm looking at the lady, and she has the lady, and she has this fucking hole in her sweater where something had clearly been ripped off. And for the life of me, I don't know why. I immediately just got up. I don't know why. I have no fucking idea why. I, what the fuck? I don't do this shit. I get up, and now I'm going down the street following the Shutter Island lady. With no training whatsoever in this situation, I'm literally walking. And now I couldn't sit down. I couldn't get to sit down. Like, I, I have this, this fucking Lee Marvin, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make shit right moment. And then I go, you know what, maybe I'll sit down. I look at the biggest pussy ever. And not only is my girlfriend there, my mother's there. So I had to keep going. So now I'm following this girl. And I'm literally... <laughs> I'm, I've never been so fucking nervous in my life. because It would have been bad enough if, if it was like a crazy dude. A crazy guy is scary, but at least you know if 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 it gets physical. I mean, what what are, what are the rules in that? Do you know, Brian? What you know? You can't hit a woman, but what if she's crazy and she just stole a brooch? How about a jab? Just kind of get her mitt in the face like Larry Holmes, so she doesn't see the overhand right coming. <laughs> Anyways, I don't know what to do. So, but I can't go back to the table, or I'm going to look like a bitch in front of my girlfriend and my mom. So I'm like, fuck. Why did I get up? Why did I get up? Why didn't I, just, why didn't I say sit inside? I wanted to sit inside, but I didn't want to seem like a rude prick in front of my girlfriend's mom. Like I tell her what to do. Like she's this kept fucking woman. So now I'm in this situation. So I'm walking down the street and this is what I do. She's on the sidewalk. I'm literally in the street. Okay. I'm like, is that circumnavigation? I'm doing some police shit where I'm staying outside of whatever she can throw at me, scratching. It's one of these people, you got to get like a tetanus shot if you roll around the ground or hepatitis or some shit. So I'm like, what am I going to do? What do I do? So I don't know what happened. I just said, I, <laughs> I basically, I just started going, hey, uh, hey, sweetheart. Hey, sweetie. I, I, I basically, I think I started calling her affectionate names from like the 1940s. Hey, uh, <laughs> fucking tall drink of water. And I finally got her attention. And she turns around and looks at me with this crazy look with tears in her eyes. And I just say, uh, I, I, I think you have something that doesn't belong to you. And meanwhile, this fucking pathetic lady who just let her walk up to her to begin with. It's like he didn't see that she was crazy. That's why I'm in this situation, right? She fucking, she ends up walking up to the girl. And the, when I said, I think you have something that doesn't belong to you, she just sort of looked at me like in slow motion, lifted up her left arm. And she had this green pea soup looking sweater on. And she had the brooch pinned to like just right around her wrist. And she just held it up. So at this point, I'm like, I'm not touching this bitch. <laughs> so I let the, the, the fucking victim lady with the sad puppy dog eyes, she comes in. And I'm basically sitting there like an NHL ref with respect for two goons that are about ready to go at it. Right. And I'm just going to jump in. When I see that I can jump in to stop this, 
this fight that's going to happen without getting hit myself. And uh, so anyways, the lady starts un- unpinning the brooch. And the whole time, she's, she basically followed my lead by being nice. She just kept going, thank you. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate this. And she couldn't get the fucking thing off. It was like one of those action movies where like the clock's going down for the bomb. And I'm sitting there going, lady, in my head, I'm like, would you get that fucking brooch off this crazy bitch's arm? And I just kept looking at her right hand because I knew at some point she was either going to gouge her eye out, just do some crazy shit, right? Like, you know, the, the scrap metal that these people put, pick up and floss their teeth with. She was just going to stick her right in the jugular. So finally, long story short, she gets the fucking brooch off and then we, we, we back away. It was like a uh, exchange. Like we, like we gave some money, briefcase, and we got the, the abducted kid back. And we fucking walk away. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Thank God. Thank God that worked out. And I actually walked back to the, to the brunch. All right? Walked back to the brunch. And I got a fucking applause break from like all these people eating eggs Benedict and eggs Florentine. It was fucking awesome. I was a goddamn hero this week, people. A scared, nervous fucking hero. Dude, I'll tell you, Brian, I didn't come within seven feet of this woman. I was literally, you know, you know, fucking uh, the avenue out there. I'm not going to say where because I don't need psychos knowing where the fuck I live. You know, like I'm anywhere near that level of notoriety. Uh, I was literally fucking like she's where that wall is over there. I'm going, hey, hey, sweetheart. <laughs> to people who didn't know what was going on, they probably thought it was some construction worker hitting on her. Look at the fucking gams on her. So, uh, yeah, that was my week. That was my week, people. I got my pass, my fucking driver's test, and I was a goddamn hero. Huh? What did you do this week? You know what that reminds me of? What was that shitty action movie that ended that way, that starred that emaciated bitch, that fucking, uh, uh, I was going to say Brian Johnson, Brad Pitt's dating. What's her name? Natasha oh. Robaninsky. She's got one of those I'm a hot girl names. What's her name? No, Angelina. No. Angelina. Yeah. You ever seen a fucking ugly girl named Angelina? Natasha, Brooke. That's like a hell of a gamble. You just know your daughter is, is, is fucking, is, is going to be hot, right? And she's going to go for the money. She's going for the gold. So, uh, yeah. What, what was that movie she did where she was the assassin? And the whole movie was kind of okay, and then the movie ends with blah, 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 and then it ends, he goes, what the fuck did you do today? Oh, Mrs. Smith. Yeah. No, no, not Mrs. Yeah. Mrs. Smith. It was the one after that. Morgan Freeman was in it. And they, they, they'd shoot the gun and the fucking bullet would, would go. All, this is driving everybody on the podcast nuts because they know the name of it. Well, the m- movie basically ends. He goes, what the fuck did you do today? Right. I immediately got pissed. Yeah. I watched a mediocre movie. Did I say mediocre? Mediocre. All right, whatever. Go fuck yourselves. Okay, this is, uh, we're 35 minutes in. 35 minutes in. This is going to be, like I said, it's going to be a DVD extra. And if you're watching this, I probably should have said this earlier. Maybe we'll do it in the wraparounds. Not to talk shop. I was going to say where the fuck you can go see this, uh, get this podcast. Um, but here's something new uh, for some of you who've actually found my podcast, which I love at this point to actually find my podcast. It's like a fucking test, really weeding out the computer illiterate, um, of which I probably couldn't even find my own podcast unless I, uh, if I didn't do it. Anyways, we have a new fan page. Uh, it's it's www.themmpodcast.com, www.capitalletters.mmp. And then all lowercase podcast.com. Uh, I explained that bad. The MMP are all capital letters. All right, fuck you. www.themmpodcast.com. Go there. Um, I definitely think there'll be some pictures of Leonardo DiCaprio. I make references to shit sometimes. Sometimes people don't know what it is. The movie that I couldn't remember the name of, if it's driving you nuts, that'll be up there. Uh, and whatever else I fucking talked about. And there's, there's YouTube videos and all that type of shit. Um, of which this week, you know what? I don't have any YouTube videos. I got to admit, I was hardcore studying for this impossibly difficult um, test. What else do I got? You want me to move again so we can have something different? Sure. Where else would I go? I went from the, 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 the sofa. Well, I was going to go into another room, but I'm so paranoid that I'm going to uh, – I got to stand up here for a second. Maybe I'll be, I'll be standing up here. Can you get that? Can you get that with the camera? Is this interesting to you people? At all? Oh, here's one for you. The conspiracy theory. Somebody sent me something from, uh, from England, all right, because the 14 listeners of my podcast, I'm going international with my failure, <laughs> um, was saying that in England, they're actually experimenting with um, 
using satellite to catch speeders. Satellite technology to catch speeders. Can you fucking believe that? Somewhere in the middle of that, I just lost all outrage. I knew I was fucking pissed. I stood up and I just realized I was really hungry. That's, that's one of those things that you, you got to understand. When you're starving to death, if you sit down, it doesn't feel as bad. You know, you ever watch those things when Sally Struthers back in the day used to be next to those starving kids? And what would you see? They were always sitting down or laying down. And you think it's because they're weak. It isn't. They could stand up if they wanted to, but you just feel hungry. There's something about your pancreas sort of fills up that spot. Oh, fuck you. I know I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, all right, let's get back to conspiracy theories. Here's a conspiracy theory somebody sent me this week. Somebody sent me this this week as I put my podcast in my lap. Low level of radiation going into my nuts right now. You know what they should sell? They should make the bottom of, like give you some sort of optional lead suit with these things. You know, I think that would be a great thing if Billy Mills was still alive. If you could make like some sort of cell phone lead helmet that comes in like three different colors. A manly color, color a, uh, a womanly color, and then uh, pattern, pattern, pattern. There you go. And then when it becomes huge, then you start putting sport logos on it. Didn't they do that with the Snuggie? Then you can get like a Redskins Snuggie for all those people who get cold while watching football. <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, man, that's how I'm going to parachute out of this fucking business. I got to come up with some bullshit and just, you know, I scream all the time when I do my jokes. I don't know, how to, I don't know if you ever noticed this, Brian, but I don't know how to write a joke. So what I do is I say fuck a lot and then I just scream it. You know, and then the, the reverb of me yelling, you can't hear that there was no laughter afterwards. So I already know how to do the Billy Mays thing. So all we can do is just come up with some hunk of shit. Old people, old people. That's where you got to go. Like, you ever go, you want to kill me when I went to fucking Dwayne Reed one time and I saw that booster chair for the toilet seat? I was just like, fuck. That's brilliant. 20 million later. Yeah, 20 million later. That's it, people. You start in a booster chair and you end in a booster chair if you're lucky. If you don't end in a booster chair, that means you got hit by a bus. And what would you rather do? Here's a question for you. Would you rather get hit by a bus at 42, banging some of the hot ass, hottest ass on the planet, you know? Or would you rather live to be 70, booster chair in the toilet, you know? I've talked about this before, right? Your old balls hanging in the toilet water. <laughs> That's why they have the booster chairs, so your nuts won't hit the water. Oh, my God, is it the 80s again? What's the deal with fucking booster chairs? Um, yeah, this is the podcast. Uh, let's get on to the next thing. Uh, all right, that was me giving you a little button there. This is the podcast, and we're out. All right, conspiracy of the week. Bill, you often talk about conspiracies. Yes, I do. Um, this may or may not fall into that category, but it definitely pisses me off. I love this guy already. I don't know if this is a conspiracy, but it fucking pisses me off. Eyeball to eyeball with you so far, buddy. All right. I get my cable and internet service bundled together from Time Warner. Last month with my bill, I got an, ins uh, an insert stating that they were modifying their privacy policy. Basically, it states Time Warner reserves the right to distribute my internet content with or without my consent. From my understanding... This could mean anything from the searches I requested from Google to the websites I have been to. What rights do we have in this country anymore? Just venting. All right, dude. Yeah, absolutely. Basically, what they've been doing the entire fucking time since the beginning of the Internet is now becoming legal. So for all you people out there who always thought like uh, – like I love when you watch like those, those talk shows and they talk about um, – sexting, like your you're, you're text messaging, you know, I want to fuck you from behind, whatever. Why that's sexy, I have no idea. You know, do you think their thumbs tremble? But whatever, I'm not going to judge. Or like they, they talk about Skype sex and they'll be like, why do these people do this? Why would somebody who would never, and they always bring a psychologist on, right? And they always have a beard so you know that they majored in psychology, right? And <laughs> then they go, they always say the same shit. And they'll be just like, well, it's the uh, anonymity of it. They, they, they feel anonymous. And, and in that situation, they, 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 they do things that they normally wouldn't done. Well, first of all, people, it's not anonymous, you dumb fucks. It isn't. They're just saying it's anonymous. They just said it. Well, you don't think that they're building a file on you? It's all these fucking morons who've lived the life of the straight and narrow 
get on Skype and they stick their junk right in the camera. You're an idiot. You're done. You're already done because they, they're, they're building robots right now to, re, to fucking replace all of us. And what did you... And, but they're going to keep some of us because somebody's got to oil their fucking robot joints. And what did you do? You stuck your dick in the camera. You, you processed. It's over. It's over. You got to take the driver's test. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even study. You're fucking finished. You're going to get processed just like those people in that fucking movie with that guy who just died. I can never remember the name. What's the name of the Patrick Swayze was in it. Blood Force Thunder. New America. What the fuck was it called? Here come the Russians. Pissing the radiator. All that, all that hatred's gonna, gonna, gonna eat you up. Keeps me warm. Remember that? Ed Bagley Jr. was in it. No, he wasn't. The fucking, uh, the kid who was in Soul Man was in it. And he shot his friend. Avenge me. Come on. Red Dawn. Jesus Christ, Brian, you're a fucking director. Do you get that, man? When, when you get like you had that panic, that brain panic? Yeah, I just got it. Okay, you just got it? Okay, good. I thought it was only me. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, know this, people. If you want to watch porn, like porn, the porn industry is fucking, is going through what the music industry is going through right now, where all of a sudden the shit just became free. All right? So now everybody's fucking whacking off on the internet thinking nobody's watching what you're fucking rubbing your shit out to. They're all watching and they're building a fucking file. All right? You think already, haven't you noticed why the presidents keep getting worse and worse and they keep fucking getting on their knees and blowing the banks more and more? It's because of the internet. All they got to do is break out their internet file and show them some of the shit that they know that they jerked off to and it's It's over. It's fucking over. You got to do everything that they're going to say. Or they're going to expose you. They don't even need to take you to Dallas anymore. That's old school. That's why Kennedy got shot in the head. If there was an internet, he'd still be walking around talking right now, cutting the ribbon at his fucking library, shitting his pants. He would give the eulogy at Fathead Ted's fucking funeral. Um. Yeah. So that's that's what I'm saying. Okay. If you want to if you want to jerk off to something freaky, I would say go to a porn store and just deal with the fact that the guy behind the counter is going to know what you got. Pay cash and walk away. It's a done deal. But if you're going to go on the internet <laughs> and do some of the shit that you're doing, all you can hope now is that you're going to get lost in the shuffle. Actually, you can continue to do what you're doing as long as you never try to affect, if you never try to effectively effect change. You know what I mean? That's, that's when they break out your internet file. Other than that, it just goes on a fucking database. But the second you start a movement going, you know what, dude? I'm sick of paying 25 bucks for my first bag when I get on a plane. If you get enough people behind you, United will now go to Time Warner and be like, yeah, Russell Johnson. Yeah, open his file. What does he jerk? What's the most fucked up thing he's jerked off to? (laughs) That is the end of the movement. Because then Fox News will get it, and they'll just be like, it turns out Russell Johnson jerked off to a tranny and a midget last week. This is the guy who's going to lead us? I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm doing Glenn Beck. I mean, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't. That fucking guy. Jesus Christ. I respect those guys because they're in show business. I just wish. Maybe, maybe they can't admit that they're in show business. It's like wrestling. For the longest time, they couldn't say that it was fake. But now, you know, at some point, come on. Just say, look, we're doing fake news. We know, we know who's going to win in the end of this shit. Oh, no, it's all horrible. All right. Well, how much time are we up to here? 46 fucking minutes. For those of you at home, I do 50 minutes every week. It's a free fucking podcast. Admit it, you don't like your job. Maybe you don't like your wife. Maybe you don't like yourself. You need a laugh on a Monday. I do this for free, out of the goodness of my heart. See that, Brian? I've been a hero every fucking Monday. Maybe that's what inspired me. (laughs) You know what takes it away? That you, you can tell that I am an I'm a piece of shit. Because if I was a true fucking hero, I wouldn't have told you that story. I wouldn't have brought it up on the podcast. It's like a heathen. I'm praying in public right now. I should have just done some heroic shit and walked away. That's when you're badass, right? Explosion. You don't even look at it. That's what I should have done, and I didn't. You know why? Because I'm a fucking coward, and I'm I'm fucking blown away by the fact that I, you know, Bill, it was a chick. You know what's funny is she weighed like 70 pounds. That's the funny thing, but she was crazy. That's, That's mental steroids when you're crazy. They can all of a sudden pick you up, do the airplane spin like, Sergeant Slaughter, did he do that? He didn't do that, did he? He had the fucking Cobra clutch. All right, let's wrap this podcast up with um, the overrated, underrated. 
segment. And uh, this segment is people send in uh, stuff that they feel is overrated or underrated. They make a list. I comment on it, and hopefully, hopefully it's hilarious. I will tell you what is fucking overrated is buying a goddamn shoe rack. Are you like me? Are you to the point where your feet have stopped growing? <laughs> you don't throw out your fucking sneakers, and you got 58 of them, and you got shoes, and you got boots, and all that type of crap. I got all of that shit, and they were filling up my fucking closet, and I'm like, all right, I got to get one of those shoe racks, okay? But I need one that can hold a bunch of shoes. Don't look at the picture on the outside of the box because they put fucking doll shoes on those goddamn racks. And it looks like you can easily fit three, four pairs of breast. And then you come home, one pair of Timberlands and a fucking flip-flop, and that's a whole level. Then you can't take it back. This whole fucking thing annoyed me. That's overrated. Overrated is doing that. Just leave your sneakers on the fucking floor. You know what? Why don't you go down to fucking, uh, I was going to say Grossman's. Go down to uh, the, the, the Home Depot. And build your own shoe rack for a fucking adult. I'm literally sweating in my own apartment here. Am I gonna be, am I gonna be sweaty on the podcast? Look at me. Who is that? Who's this guy? For those people at home, huh? Who is that guy? Remember that coach? I don't remember his coach either, but he coached the team out in Vegas. Something with a T. It was like an old Elmer Fudd. Like if Elmer Fudd fucked Don Zimmer, that's what he looked like. Jesus, that was insulting. All right, here's one from somebody. Underrated. Uh, Quincy. The show Quincy. The Fonz and Sam Malone get all the credit for getting the ladies, but Quincy got just as much ass as any of them. It seemed like he had a different chick on his, on his houseboat every episode. He was basically a silent assassin. The best part of it is that he used the word broad to refer to the ladies. Those were different times. They really were. They really were. Jack Klugman is Quincy. That was like, uh, that was the end of an era. Remember that, Brian? You ever hear, like when we were growing up? The, 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 the casting couch when guys ran this fucking business. And now look, you know what's funny? Is they thought if, if, the, if the ladies, if they ran it, that, it, that, w- that it, would be, it would be better. But it isn't. It's just is unbalanced the other fucking direction. Now you got a bunch of pussies on TV who are afraid of their wives. You know, Ralph Cramden used to threaten every week. That's what I loved about that show because they still showed him being a moron. But he's still physically intimidator, you know? Like Larry Johnson. <laughs> he had that power forward respect on that show. That's all I'm looking for. Just show a guy in a relationship who's getting a little bit of fucking respect. You know? All right. I'm going over my time here. The last thing we're going to talk about is bad covers. I talked last week. How, uh, somebody, Mary J. Blige, did a cover of uh, uh, Stairway to Heaven and A uh, Whole Lot of Love. And it wasn't bad, but you know what I mean? I don't know. It's just one of those things where there's some, some music, it's just sacred. You know, it's sacred to you. So no matter how talented somebody is, uh, you're like, what the fuck? So I was talking the last really bad cover that I heard that it just really just annoyed the shit out of me. Well, actually, I was in a gym and somebody had remixed. Aw, oh, shit. Did the remix of uh, Sympathy for the Devil by the Rolling Stones. You know, and I'm going to go out on a limb. I think Mick... Keith and the guy, I think they got it right the first fucking time. These fucking assholes. First of all, the first thing they do is they edit out the guitar solo. Okay? Take Keith's guitar solo out. And then at one point, literally dropped out everything other than Mick, Mick Jagger's voice. And then had some new updated, like, like uh, Casio drum beat underneath it. It, it was just, ugh, it's just the fucking worst goddamn song I've ever heard. Jesus Christ, Bill. How did I not make that funny? I really bombed with that. Like, I started off, it was decent. I got lost in the middle of it. You know, I got freaked out. I was like, what if Mary J actually buys this fucking DVD? I I went to that arrogant space. You know what it was? You know what happened there, Brian? I cared. I cared, and the whole fucking thing went away. All right, let's see here. The last bad cover. Um, this here's one from somebody, and I know this 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 actually this segment is starting to blow up. I just didn't have time to put everybody, so don't uh, everybody's bad covers on there. I want to read these because you guys really came up with some great ones this week. Um, here's one that he says. Uh, all right, this the cover the cover song that pissed me off the most has to be Slash and Fergie's Slash and Fergie from the Black Eyed Peas. Featuring that dude from Cypress Hill, They're, they actually redid Paradise City. And uh, right there, I, I was immediately going, oh, no. Oh, no. 
And he says, all that energy and swagger on the, of the original, everything that made that song a bona fide classic is ruined in this version. Anyone that really holds up Slash as a god and trashes Axel cannot honestly sit there and tell me that this song does more to ruin Guns N' Roses' name than the Chinese democracy. What a horrible, infuriating idea. Please, please give this song the, the treatment it deserves on your podcast. I got to admit, I am a fucking huge... This is how big a fan of I am of Slash. Like, I was right with him, Slash is Snake Pit. I saw Velvet Revolver. Anything he does, I will go fucking see. I remember I saw Joe Perry Project, and he showed up, and he played with the band. It was fucking awesome. I love Slash, but I got to tell you, this one, and I'm not trashing Slash here because even De Niro has made some bad fucking movies, but uh, here it is. You guys want to hear a little? I'll, I'll play just a little bit of this. I'm actually not worried about Slash seeing this because we won't have the rights to play this on the DVD. So here you go. Um, I think it's been a really nice podcast this week. Um, and you should appreciate it, especially a free podcast from a hero such as myself. <laughs> I just like saying that. It's so fucking annoying. Hey, what do you do? Well, I'm a comedian and also I'm a hero. I'm a fucking hero. Uh <laughs> As long as they're crazy women and they weigh less than 70 pounds, I am right there to do my duty as a, as a, as a stand-up citizen. So here it is, everybody. Everybody have a great week. Thanks for listening to the podcast. And we're going to close out with the, the Paradise City 2.0. I'll play a little bit of this shit. Uh, this is Slash Fergie from the Black Eyed Peas and that guy from Cypress Hill. You know, the, the fucking trio that we've all been waiting for for years. They finally came together, and here's what it sounds like. Dude, what the fuck already? What the fuck already? Right here you're going, okay, maybe they're going to save it. Maybe they're going to save it. Ah, enough. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Dude, you ever get, like, fucking embarrassed for somebody else? What the fuck? You know, I, I hate, I can't. St- Why do rappers always have to let you know who the fuck is in the building? I, I can read the liner notes. We got Slash in the house. I know. He wrote it. The Duchess. Fergie. Ah, that, that, that is, yeah. That one didn't bug me as much as Led Zeppelin, I have to admit. Like, because when, when Guns N' Roses, when they came out, I was like 19, 20. I already realized I could see myself becoming a loser. It's that music that you loved when you had hope. You know? Speaking of which, here's one for my, my childhood. I uh, hope for a speedy recover for uh, Brett Michaels, man. Seriously, man. I know a lot of people uh, may, may or may not like fucking poison, whatever. You got to hand it to the guy. They stuck around for 25 fucking years. And uh, he's in the hospital right now. So I hope that guy. Uh, Comes out better than fucking ever. And uh, that's it. See, that's what a hero does. He brings it around to a nice moment. That's the, uh, that's the podcast for this week. Um, please tune in next week. Please keep all the, um, the questions, comments, and all that stuff coming. I really appreciate it. Have a great week. And uh, that's it. Take it easy.